Israel is calling up hundreds of thousands of reservists to fight uh, fight the people in the bloody area. In Gaza, Johnny. Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip. In Gaza, Johnny. But do keep that in the back of your mind. I mean, if you're a reservist living in Israel, you'd have to be pretty bloody, uh, pretty bloody prepared. Well, it depends how your government's prepared you. I mean, in Israel, people have been indoctrinated into believing they're continually under threat. Well, that's true, yeah. Under threat from all over, uh, countries all around them. And so they've been here in that bloody scenario for years, and they're mentally prepared to be called into action at any given time. Female soldiers drive the training vehicles. And why do you want to be part of this? It is the most important job for us. We're fighting for our country and all of us need to take a big part of it. And uh, the men are in the war, going to go in. So we're going to do our best, the women, to help. Johnny Shawley here in Australia. Here in Australia we'd have plenty of people wanting to fight for their country. Well, I don't know about that, Johnny. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Let this sink in for a moment. Israel, population of 9 million people, can call up 360,000 reservists within a couple of days, predominantly young people. Australia, we've got a population of around 26 million. We've only got 30,000 reservists. And given how so many young people feel about our country here, you've got to wonder if we could even call them up. Jesus Christ! compared to where the Israelis are in love of country, a belief in themselves. And I've got to ask then, where have we gone wrong? Well, Peter, we have taught an entire generation of young people to be ashamed of their country. And the Institute of Public Affairs did a poll of young Australians last year. And we found that amongst Australians aged 18 to 24, only 32% said they would fight for their country if we were attacked. Oh my fucking God! And what percent? Only 32% said... Oh my f right, yeah. And on top of that, you got sort of a drop-off in bloody people volunteering for military service here in Australia and England and bloody the US. And I think it's because they don't want to fight for anybody. They don't want to have a fight in the first place. Oh, Johnny, I don't know about that. So it's not surprising that young people who've been taught lies for generations just reflexively repeat them and expect standing ovations. Well, I suppose if you... Today, I'm here to talk about one of the biggest challenges that the U.S. military has ever faced. No, it's not Putin, or Kim Jong-un, or nukes. It's American teens. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. America's youth have an uh, all-time low interest in military service. This has been one of the worst years for U.S. military recruiting since Vietnam. The U.S. Army faces a recruiting shortfall. So every service really struggled this year and fit in this fiscal year to meet their recruiting goals. And that's got the Pentagon and our politicians freaking out. All right. Yes. There are a bunch of people at high-level positions in the government that are conspiring to get us to go to war. And that's the thing about a lot of these bloody, yeah, recruitment bloody ads, Johnny. <laughs> showing all the great virtues of being in the army and the air force or whatever showing you this and that and sporting achievements and you can be your own person and do all that sort of bloody stuff yeah yeah i'm with you but no one really mentions that uh, that if there's a war you're going to get the shit blown out of you